Hey yo what's up, Maji here and welcome to another Monday Night Dive. So today we're going to be checking out another release from Eyes One and we are going to be going in chronological order, hopefully. So uh, today we're going to be checking out their first Japanese release which is entitled Sukito Iwasetai. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, see what it's all what it's all about, and let's enjoy some more music from Eyes One. Here we go. Okay. Very bright instrumentals. Ooh. I think I just noticed something, but we'll see later. Oh yeah! The treatment of the vocals sounds really interesting. Kind of reminds me of other J-pop groups I know. Just in the effects on the vocals. Ooh. Oh, this is so catchy. I'm really liking this. And I like the scene where they are in the long coats. Ooh. These shots just look so cool. By the way, what I was noticing since from earlier are the clubs behind them. Do the clubs behind them have natural sheet lightning? Or is that just effects? There it is again. And there. Ooh, I'm loving this chorus. It really sticks in your head. <laughs> and they just really look so cool in those long coats. Okay, what are these now? <laughs> Just like trash bags? <laughs> Ooh. This chorus just really appeals to me. Okay. So that was Eyes One with Kito Iwasetai. And, well, um, uh, what can I say? 
I was kind of holding back uh, commenting too much earlier because like I was just so captivated by the song and that uh, <laughs> like really the, the, the comments um, turned out to become you know sparse and few but yeah uh, now let's actually talk about it so first of all uh, let's go by the stuff that I mentioned. The treatment of the vocals. Um, I kind of got used to it as it went on, so I'm not quite sure if it stayed the same all throughout. But at the starting, I could uh, really hear it. There is this a special kind of reverb uh, used on the vocals. Um, that I could hear in the first verse. That kind of reminded me of, you know, uh, J-pop back when I used to listen to J-pop. <laughs> like the Hello Project era. So, uh, yeah, it, it kind of brought me back to that time. And, um, what, what else did I mention? The sets. Well, or not? It's not. Those are not uh, sets. Those are uh, um, locations. The locations that they use, like uh, the one where they were out on the like painted concrete outside with the clouds in the background. So one of the first things that I noticed was the sheet lightning in the clouds, and um, I'm not sure if. If those are real or effects, it's probably effects because like to time your shoot that accurately that you get to have this sheet lightning effect in the clouds, <laughs> that's that's some extraordinary timing right there. But nonetheless, uh, even if it is uh, special effects, uh, it still looked pretty cool. It added like this extra layer of... Um, Extra layer of oomph <laughs> to the video. Like you don't just have like white clouds on a you know on a bright day. There's some lightning going on there. So there's also this kind of a hint of mystery about it. Although you don't really get that from the from the song itself, but it's a nice touch. It it, it kind of adds to to uh, drawing you into the scenes uh, where where you can see that. And then the other location where I, I'm not sure if it's like another location or if it's near the same location where they were wearing the long coats and then they just had these um, I don't know like signposts or markers with the up arrow symbol on them but yeah it's like uh these locations are pretty simple but like for example the 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 painted concrete uh part it was shot really really nicely and then the the scene with the where they were wearing long coats that will just be the scene where they were wearing long coats for me it's like like the the setting itself the location itself was quite simple um any uh, props over there were simple but uh they were able to bring this color in with those coats that they were wearing not too eye popping though. Um, the colors that they were wearing were kind of bright, but not too bright. Uh, it, it was a really nice balance for me. That's why it really appealed to me. Like I, I kind of like things when uh, they have this certain sort of balance to them. And then, yeah, it's just the the MV as a whole. Even though. Uh, 
even though they just had these like was it like three or four three or four locations S scene settings uh the elements that they had in it really made for a captivating video for me okay it might not be enough for some like some people are drawn more to flashy stuff some people are drawn more to simpler stuff i'm somewhere in the middle and for me this is a nice middle and yeah now the song itself really catchy especially that chorus i like that they changed up the lyrics in the second chorus like uh the first chorus of course it's sukito wasetai um I believe the lyrics in the second chorus something like Skito Inasai. Not quite sure if it's Inasai, but uh Yeah, it's like I I also kind of like songs where they change up uh lyrics in the chorus. Because um uh, it kind of breaks um it breaks out of the shell just a little bit like you still have a chorus right it sounds the same but the lyrics vary a little bit just enough to to make you think that hey even though this thing is repeating this chorus is repeating there's something new here so i have to listen again so that's the, kind of the psychology that uh that kind of draws me in to uh that kind of a change in the chorus so yeah um this this whole song just just brought me back to the era of j-pop that i liked <laughs> which is yeah the, the hello project era and it it was a sound that um Still sounded like Eyes One, right? Because uh, they kind of still brought over some elements that they had from Lavian Rose, but you can tell that the the musicality was kind of kind of shaped, kind of tailored to fit the Japanese sound better. So. As far as Japanese releases goes, uh, yeah. As far as Japanese releases go for a K-pop group, this was really, really good. Um, like in terms of that sound that uh, that you you find in J-pop. Of course, you know. I, you can't really generalize that much when it comes to K-pop and J-pop because there's a, a lot of variety within those genres. Um, I'm just saying it's more like the sound of J-pop that I've, I'm used to. The J-pop that I've been listening over the years. So, uh, probably for those of my generation, when it comes to J-pop, I'm not quite sure what generation of J-pop. Um... Uh, uh, stand I am but yeah it will appeal to that uh, to that um, to that sense of ours of, of the type of J-pop that we like <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if I explained that quite correctly anyways uh, let's wrap this up love 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 the song uh, I can't wait to hear more from Aizuan and this this song is going to make it on my daily playlist I'm gonna want to listen to this every day <laughs> so yeah so just a really great uh, Japanese debut single from Aizuan um, and I really hear I, I really hope to get to hear more stuff well somewhat similar but not too similar okay 
uh, you know, group groups tend to have a certain sound, but uh, I like it when they also tend to deviate a bit. So yeah, I am really starting to enjoy my journey through Ice One. Hopefully, I can uh, film a reaction to the Produce Forty Eight series already. I still haven't been able to find the time. I've been really really busy. I was super busy last week, which caused me to fall behind in work, uh, in my work. And now I'm catching up on work, so I'll I will try to find time to get started on the Produce Forty Eight series though. Um, probably on Wednesday. Uh, most likely I might have the time on Wednesday. So we'll see. Anyways, that is it for my reaction to Ice One's Skito Iwasetai. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, feel free to check out my Patreon, where I also post reactions to longer form content, uh, more casual content, um, usually variety series uh, for the groups that I'm following on this channel, but also survival shows when we can get them. And yeah. Uh, most of that is available on my Patreon for free, so don't be afraid to check it out. The link to my Patreon is in the description down below. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining me on this wonderful, amazing journey with Ice One. And until next time, have a great day everyone, and hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.